This video is going to explain how to take this finished part in SOLIDWORKS and export it into a format where you can upload it to a 3D printing website and 3D print each part. Um, so basically, right now, this entire thing we just designed is stored in a SOLIDWORKS format. So SOLIDWORKS, like the physical way it's stored, is based on all of these operations you did. So every time you open it, it'll rebuild these operations. What you want to do is you want to save the parts. It's kind of like when you make a video, you have to render it. Um, that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going to take each of these parts and individually save each part as its own body. As its, so what you do is you click the part. So you come over here to Solid Bodies. You expand it out. You click the first one, which happens to be a corner. Um, you go to File, Save As. Um, I save it as an STL, so I have an STL folder. I click that. I start a new folder. We'll call this... Thingy, which isn't very descriptive. We'll go thingy three by three. yeah, whatever. Thingy. So we'll open this up, and then we're gonna save this as corner because this is the corner piece. And then you write dot, and then you write the number of parts there are in the complete puzzle. So three by three, there is eight corners. So we're gonna just type eight ninety nine. And you come down here, and it, right now it's saving as a SolidWorks part, but you want to save it as a STL. So you go up here. It says STL. Start at STL. Click that. And then you want to come down here to options, and basically you can define how complex it stores it. So like when it's when it stores an STL, it takes the parts and it basically just like simplifies it into a bunch of polygons. So like it has a curved surface, it'll like make it to a bunch of triangles that kind of resemble a curved surface. Um, but you basically by adjusting this deviation, you can like determine like how many triangles there are. So. Um, usually, like when you upload to these websites, there's a limit to how complex the files can be, and most Wizzy puzzles like approach that limit pretty fast. So, I like to keep deviation low. That keeps the the file itself pretty small. So here you can go up pretty high, but I'll, I know I'll keep it down here. This isn't default, so you're gonna have to adjust that. Let um, me press OK, and then you can go save, and you want to save. Click yes. It tells you how many triangles there are file size, and you do selected body here, and then you press OK. And you do that for each one of the bodies. So I'm going to go down to the edge. I'm just going to go through it real fast. File, save as. Um, in three things, so edge, dot, 12, come down to STL, save, yes. Like the bodies. Okay. Now the center cap. Let's go cap dot six. STL. We should be able to figure this out. I mean, it's all intuitive after. They all follow the same procedure as the first one, but I'm not editing this video. So you can just watch me do it all. All right, and finally the core. You don't even need to. If you don't specify the amount of parts, it'll just save it as one. All right, so cool. I'll save the STL. So now we're gonna we're gonna close SolidWorks. Um, I guess I'll gonna close SolidWorks. Um, close this, and now we're gonna open a program called Part Stacker. Um, instructions for how to download this are in the description, but basically it's invented by a guy named uh, uh, Tom Z. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's a brilliant puzzle builder and a brilliant programmer. Because this program, what it does is it'll take a bunch of STLs and it'll efficiently stack them. And what this does is it creates um, basically a, a low volume. Because 3D printing costs are based on like the amount of printer space you take up, because what it's doing is it's printing it layer by layer. So I mean, if the pieces are really tight, that uses up less space in the printer. And saves them money, saves you money. Um, this program will efficiently stack them. Um, Shapeways also charges you based on your part count. So what this program does is it creates what's called a center box, which is just uh, kind of a hollow box around all of the parts. Um, and what that does is when you upload it to Shapeways, it'll consider the whole thing as one part, which will save you a lot of money on part count. So 
Um, all in all, it's basically pretty much the most efficient way of making your prints cheaper. Um, so what you want to do is you press import here. You go, we're going to go to documents, CAD, STL, thingy, three things that we did. So I'm just going to select all of these, shift click them all, open. And what that does is it has a name here, cap, this is a quantity, volume triangles. So it has all of our parts here. So the dot basically translates the quantity over for you. So you can basically, there's all these little part settings you can do, like um, clearance, like you can make the part parts really close. Um, bounding box is basically tells you like the initial and like final box it tries to fit it into. I don't know, read about how it works on this program. And the center box is right here, make sure it's generated center box around it, it'll generate it. So, oh yeah, also when you try installing this program, there are a few other like features you need on Windows, other programs installed to allow this to run. Make sure you download those too. All the links should be in the description. Um, so you just have this already, you press start, and what it does is it first simplifies every piece and then it tries stacking it, so let's watch it. Usually it shows you over here. Um, it hasn't done anything yet. So there's a lot of weird settings over here you can adjust. This is weird. Hold on. All right. So now it just stacked everything, and it made a center box around it. And it says, uh, "Would you like to save the result?" But it says the final bounding box is this. And it's 4.5% density, which is really pathetic. Usually you want to go for something around 10, so obviously something didn't go right, so we're going to press no. And you can look here, you can see what it did is just it stacked everything into a corner, which means our bounding box was too big. So we're going to lower this, lower it to like, um, like 90, a lot lower. So let's, let's lower this whole thing and start it again and see what happens. Um, stacking it now. Mm, much better, 7.5, but still, if you look at this here, oops, there was there was a big corner, so we're going to make this even smaller. Make it like, let's make it 80 each. Pretty much just playing around with it till you get the perfect one. Might not work, but I mean it's workable. Look at that, 10.3% density. That's that's pretty good. That's gonna be pretty cheap. So we're gonna say yes, save it. Um, let's make this final three by three. And then you come to the internet, you go to shapeways. There's a few different sites you can print from, but this is basically how you 3D print all the parts. You go, it's intuitive, you just upload it right on the Shapeways, upload, select file, documents, CAD, STL. And here it is. So you can upload it, and then you can just pay to have it 3D printed and sent to your house. Um, yeah, so that's the whole tutorial for 3D printing. Um, for now, that's the final tutorial on this series. Um, as for building, like once you get the parts, um, I may, might, might make tutorials about that if you guys are interested, but for now, this is just the whole process of designing it and getting it online. If you have any questions, um, please ask, and I'll answer them as fast as I can. Thank you for watching.